Hey, it's Bob Duffy from Intel here, and boy, am I excited to show you guys something that I've been waiting a long time to show you. Are you ready? It's an Intel Arc GPU rendering using the Cycles engine in Blender. Yes, it's here, it's working, it's beautiful, it's wonderful, it's, it's glorious. Um, but again, I have to be honest with you, there's not a whole lot to go over because, you know, it's a GPU and it, it just works. So uh, I'll go through some of the settings so you know how to get this going. And then I'm going to show you some cycles goodness. So you guys know that, you know, no fakery going on here. This is the real deal. This is ARC rendering. Uh, and to do that, let's first go through that. Um, you're going to want to select the cycles engine and make sure that your device is set to GPU. Uh, in order to have that GPU setting, you'd have to go over to the edit menu here to do that. Um, so that's available. So the first thing you want to do is go to edit, select preferences, go to the system tab. And this is, these are your cycles rendering devices here. I'm a little bit blurred out because I'm using pre-production hardware. I can't show you everything, but if you were going to be doing just CPU rendering, you'd select none. But if you're using a discrete GPU like Nvidia, you'd select CUDA. And if you're using an AMD GPU, you'd select HIP. And now we have this mysterious tab over here, and that's for Intel architecture. Um, and like I said, I'm blurred out. Yes, pre-production hardware. But trust me, this checkbox is an Intel Arc GPU. And uh, I, I can show you, because if I turn it off and I select something else here, then you'll see that the GPU setting goes away. And then if I turn it back on, then it is a GPU. So that selection is an Intel Arc GPU, and that's what we're using to render in cycles. And you notice that I'm in this real-time cycles viewport where it gets kind of noisy. Now that's normal. For any path tracing viewport, you're gonna see that in Maya, Keyshot, and Blender here. It's totally normal. What you're seeing are those samples calculating the scene, and it's noisy at first, and, and then it settles in. <clears throat> that settling is denoising taking effect. And that's brought to you by Intel. The Intel Open Image Denoise using AI to clean up the scene. And this is something that you can control. You can go over to your render properties and you can set what that is going to be. So go over there to sampling viewport denoise and your start sample, I've got mine set to eight. But you could set this down to like nothing, set it to zero. And then at that point on the first samples, it's going to try to denoise. But if you look at it, you know, it gets a little bit blurry, kind of artifacty as I move the camera around. That's because there's not enough information to calculate it. So I, I like it to be a little bit more pixelated, even though that it's grainy, but it's sharp. So I set mine to eight, but you can set it up to whatever you want. And another goodness of this real-time viewport is to get an idea of your material workflow. And part of that is things like glass or other kind of cycles materials and being able to see those things in near real time. So I've got this object here, it's game piece and it's made of glass. You can see I'm using the glass BSDF shader as well as the principal BSDF shader as well. They're mixed together. But let me just connect the glass in straight so you can see what I, what's going on here. Um, what's going on, the reason this looks like glass is because of refraction, and that's through the index of refraction value down here. Now, if I set this down to say one, you're going to see how the index of refraction works, like light bending through a pool of water. Um, that's how refraction is done. Setting it down to one causes it to like disappear. It's invisible now. You can't see it. And that doesn't look like glass anymore. So you're going to use that value, the index of refraction, to adjust it. So let me turn it up just ever so slightly. Let me adjust this camera here a little bit. And then you'll see how it works. And this is the value of a real-time viewport like this and the power of using a discrete GPU is you can get a sense of these materials without having to do a full render. Now, if you wanted this to look like glass, you're gonna to need to use a number, something like, let's say 1.35. But for me, I like it to be a little bit more um, refraction, so I'd set it to say 1.55 for myself. And there you have it. A wonderful piece of glass. Uh, <laughs> it looks good. So let me reconnect my shaders here so it's uh, as I wanted it. 
Um, and that's the value of this real-time viewport is being able to see stuff like that. Another thing you can check out would be camera optics with things like depth of field. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and select my camera setting here, zoom in just a bit, and then select my camera. And then over in the camera properties, you can select depth of field. And depth of field allows you to see things as a camera likely would, where something's gonna be in focus and then everything else is gonna be a little bit out of focus. And you can adjust that using f-stop to, to determine how much of that effect that you want. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn on depth of field here. And you can see that I've got my focus on this game die here. And it's not a huge effect because it's set way up to 18. So I'm gonna set it down to three and you can see Boy, you got the real bokeh effect going on there. Uh, a lot of blurriness going on. And you can adjust that setting. And again, the value is being able to see this in real time because you have a powerful discrete GPU that allows you to see these settings without having to do a lot of rendering work. So I went back into some of my old projects and I wanted to see if Arc was up to the task. So like Shadow Catcher here on Purple Dude, not a problem, that worked. Geometry nodes with subsurface scattering, that all worked. Geometry nodes with like really dense geometry, 20 million faces, not a problem. And, and particle effects, all working really, really well. But what you really wanna see is a render. So let's kick one off. <laughs> Go to the render tab, uh, select render. And uh, my denoise is set to 32 samples, so we should see that finish and clear right up about 32 samples. So right about, uh, there it is. <laughs> All right, there you go, folks. Uh, an Intel Arc GPU rendering in Cycles X, looking good. All that noise is gone, woohoo. All right. So expect this in a future Blender build targeting Q2, so stay tuned. And with that, I invite you to like this video and subscribe to this YouTube channel to get more Intel Arc and Blender goodness. Until next time, I'm Bob Duffy, and we'll catch you later.